This is the pure copper ingot skyscraper. This is the most efficient approach how you can approach the conversion of copper ore into the copper ingots with a pure copper recipe. The issue here how it's done, this is quite an interesting puzzle. First of all, this is nine universal blueprints stuck together vertically uh, and that's it. All you will need three Mark V belts for the output of 780 copper ore, which is being converted into 1950 ingots. Quite a lot. Uh, so how nine blueprints are handling that is all already a challenge. This video is all about math, this video is all about logistics with satisfactory limitations because one thing is to just jungle around with the numbers, another thing to make something usable with satisfactory tools. And another thing is well how you make it pretty because well there are a lot of boxes you want to avoid boxes and well if you add some windows decorations well it's great there is one blueprint that is handling all the connections and the production but i have one decorative uh, like exterior blueprint for my miner which is basically the foundation for the whole thing uh, you can get away without using one you can just have the miner on the side but i prefer to cover my miners uh, when i'm doing those module smelters module refineries uh, so there is that so technically this is two blueprints but the all production is handled in one single blueprint, which is universal blueprint. Obvious elephant in the room is the amount of refiners that you'll need total to convert your pure node of copper into copper ingots. And over here in the refiners we have conversion rate of 37.5 per refinery, so you need to take the total conversion numbers which would be 1050 and divide it by 37.5 and we'll have 52 refineries total to convert the whole pure node of copper into well copper ingots. But we can have three refiners in every single blueprint so we can divide this number by three and we get into the ballpark of 18 blueprints to convert our pure node of copper this is not a lot but at the same time it's a bit ridiculous so over here we have 10 blueprints stacked and this already looks like a skyscraper quite thin one so if we double that it will look just ridiculous but there is another factor which is amount of work that you will need to put into that 18 blueprint skyscraper uh, if you are doing something like this well if you're doing the twice amount of the blueprints well you need to put first of all twice the amount of materials and second of all you'll need to put an effort into the twice as much in the belt department which is a lot so basically we'll avoid that by overclocking our blueprints our refineries and to understand overclock we need to understand our subdivision how we subdivide our total production chain and we're already thinking about three belts for the output we need three mark five belts to handle 1950 copper ingots and on the other end, when we are intaking our ore, well, we can subdivide by three because, well, uh, the number of copper ore from the pure node is 780 if we are using Mark III miner fully overclocked. And if we divide it by three, well, we'll have 260 ore, which is quite handy because, well, we can handle that with Mark III belts. Basically, we'll take 780 ore and divide it by simple splitter into three parts, and the output is basically once again three Mark V belts. This dictates the subdivision of three triplets. I know it sounds vague, but it will make sense in the next bit. And let's get a bit ridiculous over here. First of all, we need to take uh, our total output of uh, nine, uh, 1950 copper ingots, then we divide it by three subdivisions and we get our output for the copper ingots, which is 650 per Mark V belt, then we divide it by three blueprints in every single subdivision, we are getting to the 216 copper ingots per blueprint. And then we divide by an amount of refiners that we have in every single blueprint, which is three, and we are getting to the number 72 plus minus a bit more. This very interesting number because, well, can we handle that with every single refiner? and yes we can totally handle that with 200% overclock. So this is basically your amount of overclock that you need to do on every single refinery to have those free triplets of blueprints to handle well 1950 copper ingots in the full production chain. So first question is how I handle my connections and well what are the lines, uh, how everything is being split, is there any manifolds and stuff and there are actually a quite an interesting manifolds over here. If you think about nine blueprints you will need to have nine intakes and nine outtakes, nine outputs but this is not the case over here because I am using manifolds for every single subdivision and this is done in very interesting and clever way 
way because well i have only three lines on the in and three lines on the out we are splitting our ore over here with three mark three belts or conveyors so this is like that and then we have well our first blueprint or first subdivision over here and the interesting question is how you continue your subdivision well simple you just continue your manifold over here there are quite a lot of internal belt work that i'll show later uh, but basically your continuation with the manifold for uh, another two blueprints so this is the blueprint number one this is the blueprint number two and this is the blueprint number three and this is your first subdivision uh how you making the output basically this is the same mirrored but instead of well mark three belts we are using mark five belts so we are taking manifold output over here we are connecting that over here uh, bringing it inside of the next blueprint then we are continuing our manifold over here then doing the same as ah come on this is live production and here we go the final one the final blueprint and we have our subdivision done and we will have our output over here so this is the first blueprint the second blueprint and the third blueprint the good question is how we will do two more subdivisions and this is quite simple because we actually have the space over here but instead of the connecting things straight we will just skip our outlets on the first subdivision on the second subdivision if we are going for the third subdivision yeah there are a lot of a lot of <laughs> a lot of things to say so we are basically skipping on the uh, all the outlets over here for the second subdivision until we hit well the free blueprint and over here we are finally making our second subdivision by connecting this outlet and continuing this with the manifold over here for two more blueprints here you go so this is the second subdivision intake and the same will happen with the output and basically in the end of the day you can reach the third subdivision by doing the same thing just keeping over the second and the first subdivisions so this was the very vague explanation more of visual thing how everything is done now i will explain how everything done internally over here we are connecting our ore there are three outlets and they all will work why well because everything is getting merged before actually getting fed up to our refiners over here and finally getting manifolded into the next blueprint and once again because this is the universal blueprint i have omnidirectional out and omnidirectional in i do not know which one of those outlets will be connected and by only connecting one outlet you will always have the correct ratios this is really simple and important if you connect two things it will not work because well you have only so much production so this is this side the side of well output is basically the same but reversed and with mark 5 belts because well we need to handle more materials so first of all we are getting the materials from the topmost blueprint in subdivision uh, which could be any of the uh, intakes over here uh, then we are getting merger over here with well the production of our refiners in this particular blueprint so we are merging all of that and then it's finally getting split once again into three lines and the one line that will work is the line that we will connect to this blueprint quite simple uh, but i think i can go even dumber than that and for that we will need paint all right so this would be glorious so first of all we have our ore which is 780 copper ore uh, then we just subdivide into three outputs and three subdivisions yeah this is very straight so here's our first three blueprints then there are like uh like second subdivision with three blueprints and the final subdivision with three more blueprints man this is so straight i'm such a painter <laughs> here we go so every single one of them is like 260 ore and this ore is getting manifolded in three more blueprints so it's divided by three it's roughly around like 90 ore per blueprint uh, so basically what is happening over here like 260 there 260 there 260 there but then on the other side basically the reverse of that is happening uh, we have total output of 1950 and is this is being fed by three subdivisions with well each subdivision producing what i don't remember the exact number which is uh, 216 or 18 so basically every single blueprint producing this amount and this is total of 650 over here and the same happens on every single subdivision over there wow i'm such a painter look at this this is beautiful <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, I could not just stand this. But this is what is happening over there, and if you do not understand that, I don't know. I'm sorry. I am failed as an explainer. And the final bit is to explain how it's done in the game with, well, real thing. In general, you want to have 4x4 foundation uh, to place your, well, miner. And I, then I take my blueprint cover. Here we go. Uh, log diagram with Nash tool H. Then just plop it over there. Then we need to make a bit of connections over here. So, first of all, I need to use my Mark V miner. So here we go, and I need to use my flashlight. Uh, a bit of clipping over here, but you can be a bit more precise that I'm over here. And then I'm just connecting that to my first split for the free mark free belts. Uh, obviously I need to overclock that to have my maximum output, uh, which for the normal node is that, for the pure node it would be higher. Uh, and then I just, well, place my blueprint on top of that. Uh, where is this baby? Over here. So. We can snap it to the blueprint mode and it will make it easier. So the first one, the second one. Let's make the two subdivisions to just make it a bit easier and faster for the sake of the video. Here we go, six blueprints, two subdivisions. And first of all, the elephant in the room is how do you connect the water. It's quite simple, we have only one water line because, well, we need maximum of 520 water per everything. And this is how you just connect all the water. This is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, uh, nothing fancy. You just have one line of water until you reach the end. Then the good question is how you will be doing this not in the creative mode. Uh, well, first of all, this is the end game blueprint, so probably you will be using the hover pack. And over here we have our electricity lines, uh, which basically can support your hover pack and this would be not so different from the creative mode then. Uh, then we need to connect our water over here. So let's take our water extractor, our water line here. And obviously for the first thing you will need to have the first pump somewhere here, uh, like something like this. Because, well, it's quite a stretch for the first pump over there. I have no internal pump. Uh, let's just make the connections. So we already connected the water. It's already getting pumped. And we need to connect our lifts. So, first of all, you are doing the first outmost line or innermost whatever you want to be honest so this is the first subdivision then this is the first manifold for the next two blueprints so the blueprint two and now this is the blueprint three so here we go the first subdivision then we are doing the second subdivision we are skipping our first subdivision obviously here we go until we hit the vacant blueprint here we go Second subdivision, here we go. Second blueprint of second subdivision uh, is being connected right now. Over here. And this is the final blueprint for the second subdivision. And you're basically doing the same things for the output. But instead of, well, uh, mark 3 belt, we are using the mark 5 belt. Because otherwise it will just not fit. <laughs> Ten minutes later, we are finally getting there. Every single line is getting to its full production of 650 copper ingots. I couldn't go higher with this node because this is normal node. I can only plop one extra blueprint and that's it. But if you will have the pure node, we will need to have three production lines. So basically, there will be extra line over here until I reach the third subgroup. And obviously, this works like a charm. I don't know what to say about that. This is the universal blueprint. This is the beauty of the whole thing. You can use this with pretty much anything you can use this with a pure node with normal node impure node this is the question about how many subdivisions and blueprints you need to use and everything is balanced you just connect things so this was this puzzle it was quite a fun puzzle to crack to be honest and until the next one have a nice one and yeah kiss out